Uh, the third part is the running a collaborate session, being a moderator. And uh, I must say that one of the things that we're doing internally is all of our staff meetings we are running as collaborate sessions, even though uh, Brett and, and Rick are in the offices next to each other and there may be uh, 10 steps from my office. Uh, just to get more experience being the moderators in that. So uh, uh, Brett has been looking into this and developed some materials. So take it away, Brett. Thank you, Bill. I'm going to go over uh, running a collaborate session, as Bill said, and I'm uh, just going to give you some tips and tricks for moderating a successful session in Blackboard Collaborate. I'm just going over the uh, basic interface once again. Uh, we have the audio video panel with the audio setup with uh, wizard icon as well as the teleconference icon. You can have uh, people call in instead of using voice over IP. So you can actually uh, give a number for them to call. Right now it's uh, set up as a long distance number, but uh, it, uh, there's also a third party uh, capability there, but we haven't gone into that just yet. Uh, and as Bill uh, had shown, there is the uh, menu here that has many options as well. You've got your talk and video uh, uh, toggles as well as this one lets you preview your video before broadcasting it so that you know that your camera is actually pointing at you. And here you have the participants list which we'll be talking about a good bit as far as managing users and your chat panel. And you also have a moderators uh, uh, chat panel here. You can click over and talk between moderators if you'd like. And here in the content area uh, we have the whiteboard, the application sharing, and the web tour uh, features. As well, we also have the uh, load content button and the record button. That record button is a toggle, so you click it once, it starts the recording. You click it again and it stops it. And over here, we have control of the pages that we're on for the slides. So you can click forward and you can click back. And you can also have a pull down that actually uh, uh, lists all your slides. And you can also toggle uh, the follow. So if you need to skip forward, I'll do that for mine. Right now you're on uh, the previous slide, but if I click uh, follow again, you skip to the next uh, slide. For loading content, you can do it a couple ways. Uh, you can uh, do it as a PowerPoint uh, presentation or as images. I find it much easier to do it as a PowerPoint presentation. Uh, the key to this is to have uh, PowerPoint closed before you do this. Then you uh, click load content then you just, uh, using the File Explorer for your native uh, uh, OS, it's going to take you through and I'll let you select your file. See, I have Blackboard Office Hours selected here. And you click Open. And in the background, it will actually bring up PowerPoint and take a snapshot of each uh, page and create a slide out of each one. And here in the uh, participants list, we actually can right click on each uh, person. And we've got a couple of things we can do here. We can toggle their permissions, which are also uh, mouse over permissions here. You can click on them to uh, change them for each individual user. Or if you want to do it for uh, the whole room, you can turn them on and off here. You'll see here that everyone has uh, uh, voice permissions, video permissions, chat permissions, and oh, whiteboard permissions. We may want to turn that off. Uh, if you leave that on, students could uh, start playing around and put distracting things all over your uh, slides as you're going through. And then next to that is the application sharing permissions. You may want to have a student share out their screen to show uh, something they're doing there. Or web tour permissions, which is basically a built-in web browser session where you can have a guided uh, tour of a website. doesn't work very well if you actually have to log into a page because it does prompt them to log in as well. It's a local thing. It doesn't actually show them exactly what you're seeing. So here we can toggle each of those permissions as we go through. And there's also closed captioning. That's a bit more advanced than we're going to go into today. But with closed captioning, you can actually have one student typing uh, captions of what you're talking, or a moderator, or TA, whichever you uh, want to use, and then have them typing captions for a student that may be hearing disabled. You can also choose to lower their hand. So if someone raises their hand, I can go ahead and click lower hand once I've addressed, addressed them or if now is it a good time and we want to lower hands for now. But we can also send a private chat. Say I want to send a message to one of you explicitly. Uh, 
uh, to, to say, can you look into this or uh, please stop doing that, uh, you can send a private ch chat directly to them. Below that, there's breakout rooms, which we're not going to get into right now, but essentially you can have someone uh, uh, sent to another uh, room where they can discuss something privately or break up into groups, uh, hence the breakout uh, room. You can also give each person moderator privileges, which essentially makes uh, gives them all the permissions to do what I'm going over right now. And then we can take it away, and then we can just kick them from the uh, session. Uh, one important thing about this is you know, if you're doing a recording, you, everyone has to leave the session in order for the recording to process properly. So you can select people by holding down shift and clicking uh, through the users, and then right click and remove participant, and it will remove those people from your session. So we also have a tools window here that has a lot of those uh, uh, same things. But one thing, couple of things I wanted to point out here uh, are in the interaction uh, uh, submenu under tools, we have raise hand upon entering. That'll basically notify you uh, as each person comes into the room because their hand will be raised just as I did just now. And then they can lower it or you can lower it for them, or you can lower all hands. Also, you can uh, disallow people uh, from joining the session once you've started it. If, say you've started the session, there's a couple people there, and it's an open session. You don't want anyone else coming in. You can uncheck this, and no one else will be able to join that session until you uh, enable it again, which is in the same spot. Uh, as far as uses of Colla uh, Collaborate so far, uh, one uh, use case in particular was Dr. Gaines in biology. Uh, the second class of the semester, he had to go away to a conference in Washington, D.C., but he didn't want to miss the class. So we set up for him over in Cox, uh, 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 one of the main lecture halls in Cox, uh, a uh, Collaborate session where he, he was uh, in his hotel room and projected onto the screen was a participant interface so that the students could see him and see his presentation here. He actually had uh, full class uh, uh, interaction and was able to uh, carry on as if he was in the room itself. It was a great uh, session. It went extremely well. Uh, I know the nursing courses have been using it, as Katan mentioned earlier, and uh, we've also been using it in our IT, HR, and accounts payable uh, training. I know that they have uh, access to uh, create their own sessions, and I've helped a couple of them in doing that. Why use Collaborate? Uh, one thing is collaboration without leaving your desk. Like Bill said, we're not even uh, meeting in the same rooms a lot of times for our department meetings. We just open up a Collaborate session, and we talk to each other over voice over IP, and then we're able to, to share things uh, with the various tools here. And we're also increasing the use of distance education at UM, so this is going to be very important for uh, giving them uh, uh, the interaction with other students and the instructors. We can also include uh, off-site guests in meetings and lectures. Uh, great thing about this is you can have someone uh, that wouldn't otherwise be able to uh, give a guest talk come in and turn on their uh, video camera and talk as if they're, they're in the room with you, as well as using the whiteboard to give a presentation. It also increases the availability of faculty to students, uh, just making it more easy for them to come in and talk to you uh, can be make a world of difference for a student. There are some potential issues. There's a learning curve, of course, since I'm having to go over this with you now. It's not uh, as intuitive as uh, one might like, but it is a really great tool once you learn it. Uh, of course, you can have problems with uh, Java, problems with your uh, webcam, pro problems with your microphone and speakers, but that's any technology. But there is also bandwidth and connectivity issues. Uh, using this over uh, wireless, if you're uh, speaking, not uh, the best solution, but if that's all, uh, all you can do, that's all you can do. Uh, and if they just don't have uh, connectivity where they, uh, they are when wanting to participate, there's going to be that issue too, but there is always the option of giving the uh, teleconference information out. Now I'm going to do a live demonstration of some of the tools. So I'm going to share out my desktop and make this much more readable for you. Just a moment. And 
So here under tools, we can do uh, a couple of things. I can stop my sharing as I'm doing the application sharing right now. I can pause it so I'm moving my mouse around and clicking on things and you're not seeing what I'm doing. But if I unpause that, you see what I'm doing once again. Uh, from here, you can also send a snapshot of, what, of uh, your application sharing to the whiteboard so that you, if you want to illustrate a point, you can do that, uh, that directly. Uh, you can also, if you want to see what uh, this looks like uh, uh, to participants, you can show a preview window, window which as you can see does the infinite uh, mirror trick here, but I can move that off to the side and see just what's uh, coming through to you all when I share out my desktop. And I can also uh, give people access uh, uh, to control this. So if I wanted to say give Bill access, let me uh, move this down so you can see what I'm doing. I can uh, give him control to share applications. So he could actually start moving my mouse at this point if I clicked on this and gave him control. Moving the window back up. Uh, there are a couple other uh, tools here that I'm not going to go over, but if you look here, there's, uh, uh, you can show the activity uh, in the session. You can show the closed caption that's being entered. You can also show the file transfer library. I will show that really quick. This actually lets you add files to transfer to your students or uh, the participants in the session. And then uh, there's a key here that you can actually prompt them to download. If you want to say, go over a certain document that you're not going to bring up in application sharing, you can send that to them uh, by using these tools here. There's also a multimedia library which you can use uh, for videos since uh, an application sharing videos won't come through very well. And there's a quiz manager and session plan, which those are a bit more advanced than we're going to go into here as well. But uh, we can send an invite uh, in session invite here. You see here I can uh, compose an email with the uh, guest link here, but also uh, uh, I can just copy that link and I image someone or send it an email. And here's that raise hand upon entering that I mentioned earlier. So you can see that. I can lower hands. I can step away. And I can use this to show an emoticon. And there's the uh, allow new participants to enter a session. We can also select someone and give the moderator privileges, take their, away their mod moderator privileges, or remove the participant. We can do polling, and this is what Tom mentioned earlier. I can have an A through uh, uh, C or an A through D or E. Uh, if I want to put that on a slide, that's probably the best way to do it, uh, just to have a good flow there. And if I change that to an A through C, you can now uh, click on the interaction button and choose A through uh, C there. And once uh, I have, can I get a couple of responses there just so I, ha I have some to show? Okay, uh, once I have that, I can actually uh, publish response to whiteboard and that uh, will publish it to the current slide on the whiteboard. And there's a number of other things here, but uh, a lot more uh, that we want to go into right now. We can start a timer and we can uh, manage the whiteboard here as well. But if I click stop here, it'll take me back uh, there and I can select the whiteboard again and you can see that I now have the results of that poll there. That was under tools, polling, publish response to whiteboard. And are there any questions or comments? I know I went over a good bit there, but I want to make sure I include a number of things that you can try, uh, try out here. Cheryl had a really interesting question that I think is worth talking about. Um, she wanted to know whether this would be a good tool to work with other people um, on their computer to help uh, deal with the problems and they don't know how to do something and you want to show them how to do it and, and that sort of thing. Um, what's your take on that, Brad? Uh, it's not uh, extremely well suited for that, but it certainly is usable in that way. I've used it in that, uh, that way working with uh, faculty and uh, 
and stuff before just to show them a, a concept or to fix something on their computer or walk them through, uh, through uh, something, especially with being able to take control once you give them moderator privileges and talk them through. Uh, doing the uh, sharing, you can request control and then uh, uh, it's not extremely responsive that you can uh, control their computer and uh, step through there. A uh, couple other things I wanted to cover, I uh, mentioned bef uh, before we close out here. Uh, it is a good idea to invite the students or users uh, uh, to have a kind of a test run and getting into the session and making sure that they can connect properly and they've, they've got their job install, uh, uh, installed correctly. So uh, you know, maybe give them a little bit of leeway to join beforehand or maybe you can create a separate session uh, if you'd like uh, for them to join so that they can just, just test to make sure that things are working okay. Uh, and also if you're uh, uh, a little uh, comfortable doing this uh, uh, on your own for the first time, we'll be happy to help you out with that. Feel free to email us and we can set up uh, one of us to attend your first session and help you out in moderating things and making sure things are running smoothly the first time through. Well, thank you very much and uh, if you have any qu questions after this, feel free to give me an email. Thank you, Brett. Um, the, the power of this system is incredible uh, and we're learning all the time. I didn't know that you could hand off the control to somebody else. I thought I could just see their screen. So that changes my answer. Uh, Cheryl asked, is there something better for that kind of stuff? And the university IT now has a license for BOMGAR, B-O-M-G-A-R? I think so. I don't think there's a B in the middle. Um, but that costs quite a bit per seat. It's, it's simultaneous users, but it's a very nice system to work on other people's computers um, with their permission, or they can have a, a or, something or even, or even on the cell phone, it also allows you to access cell phones or a mobile device. Yeah, quite amazingly, uh, Rick tried it out with his uh, Android phone. Works fine there, where he's controlling it from his. Um, from his computer and showing somebody how to do it on their phone. Pretty amazing. Um, but those licenses are being handed out, you know, are being paid for and, and controlled. Um, as Lily says, join.me is another one that allows you to join and um, with someone else and then uh, share your information. Um, I'm still using, hmm, is it log me in? I don't remember the name of it, but Bluetooth. it has Bluetooth. stopped being free. Uh, Join me is free. The one that we had before was to go to assist. Yes, go to assist was the system that you have used before. Um, and and while you can use Blackboard uh, Collaborate to do that kind of thing, and it is free. So <laughs> it's a it's a solution. Um, and the more you use it, the uh, the better uh, you'll get at it. But uh, that isn't what it's designed for. It's designed for web conferencing. And it's not designed for me to talk to you. Um, where right now there's nothing happening in the content area and you're probably looking up at the corner of your screen. Let's see, it would be that corner. Um, <clears throat> to see, what, uh, see what's going on. Um, that isn't like, as good as Skype and some of the other things that are really designed for just having a conversation, even Google Hangouts. Uh, it's really designed where a screen becomes necessary or useful. Uh, when we have our, our department meetings, um, we'll almost always open up a document and I'll be typing notes into it so that everybody can see it. Um, uh, yes, Lily, absolutely. You can enlarge the uh, the uh, audio video window and I hope that everyone does and makes me much bigger. Uh, no, 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 make me smaller. I'm on a diet. <laughs> um, but the uh, the the process of, of doing all that uh, is extra work on the other person's part. And if you do enlarge it, what you'll see is the quality isn't that good. Um, it, it certainly isn't high def, and this is a very good camera that I've got. So uh, 
Skype and some of those others can improve the, the video quality if all you want, if all you want is the talking heads back and forth. But again, it's free. Um, and what we've done here and what, what we will be starting on April 1st as we roll this out uh, outside of Blackboard is creating uh, meeting rooms for people. Uh, you can have one meeting room and use it over and over and over again for different things. Um, so I have one in its tinyurl.com slash Bill Vilberg. And uh, I go in as Bill Vilberg moderator and you go in as Bill Vilberg and boom, we meet up. Uh, so I can use it anytime that I want to. And uh, that's, that's what we're hoping to have for individuals that want to use it uh, for many things, whether it's meeting my family from Pennsylvania, meeting with them, or uh, um, doing a quick show or working on a document with somebody, or I just bring it up on, on my computer and we sh I share that app and they can see what's going on, or whatever. So it's got some neat uses. We're really excited by it. And uh, unless there are any other questions, uh, that finishes our presentation, but we are now open to questions. Um, and, and we encourage you to use your microphone and uh, make a comment or a, a question. So if you, need, if you want to do that, uh, click up, raise your hand, and uh, then we'll find out whether you're using the, uh, the talk button or the uh, comment thing. And one thing that we would like is ideas. <laughs> We've got lots of them of what to give, do for these presentations, and we found that two per, per session seems to be fine. But uh, if there's something that you would like to see us do and demonstrate and record for other people in that, uh, let us know. Uh, you can do that right now in the chat window or using the talk button. Tick-tock, tick-tock. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the alias is supposed to be next time. And then um, why don't you do one thing for me before you leave, if you would. If you type into the, um, into the chat window, um, uh, if you think you'll be using this, how you might use it, what kind of ideas you've got for it, that would help us out too, because we're supporting it campus wide now. Uh, yeah, Lily asked about practice sessions, and uh, um, those tend to be one on one with us because it works better that way. So anytime that somebody wants to try this out, uh, we're happy to do it, either in this room or in my room or whatever room we've got. Uh, just give us a shout, give us a call, um, call the help desk, and we can set something up, schedule it on Office 365 with us, uh, send us an invite, and we'll, we'll make the arrangements. Um, it is fun to play with, and, and you do want some experience before you do it publicly. Yeah, um, Cheryl mentioned the link component of Office 365. Um, I, that's my guess is that the beauty of that is I can see who's online. Office 365 lets me see who is in Office 365 at this point. So just as I can send them a, a text message, uh, I can now open up a link session and have this kind of conversation with them. Uh, I think that's neat. But I also should point out that IT has uh, video phones, and a large number of the phones, <laughs> the camera is pointed straight up at the ceiling or is turned off entirely. So um, I kind of like uh, having a face-to-face -face virtual conversation, but a lot of people are very self-conscious. And you'd think I'd be more self-conscious given uh, the number of chins that I have and all. 
Uh, black tape over the lens. Yes, Nick. <laughs> Ah, Cheryl, the multi-campus meetings, absolutely. In fact, I feel that when I'm called over to the uh, Gables One Tower. Uh, it's a nice excuse to get some exercise, and it kills about a half an hour getting over there and half an hour getting back. But I think we're at a point now where we can automate some of that. And like I said, our meetings, our meetings here, uh, we don't even go in the same room. So if we wanted somebody else to join us in one of those meetings, Boom, send them an invite. I don't care where they are. And I was just talking to uh, one of my staff people that uh, um, being out of pocket doesn't mean we have to cancel our, our staff meeting. So if somebody is staying home that day, doesn't feel good, they can still, you know, if they're willing to, join up with our, uh, with our collaborate session and participate in the staff meeting and we don't have to reschedule and do all that. So. Limit exposure to the flu. Yes, and it, it's easier than washing your hands, too. Um, Nick, other groups of medical? Absolutely. I think that there are going to be a lot of people using it for um, large web sessions. People have been asking about do we have uh, um, the other commercial ones, his name's ex escape me now. But uh, uh, somebody just asked me today, and I said, no, we don't. But we've got this one, and it will probably do what you want. Uh, Nick has experience with Adobe Connect, um, one, a, a different solution like this that is actually, in some ways, much nicer designed and cleaner and all that stuff. So. Uh, um, I understand that there will be some resistance to changing to, from that to this, but this one's free and can be used for everything, not just education and not just meetings and that kind of stuff. Yep, there you go, Cheryl. WebEx, GoToMeeting, Adobe Connect. There are lots of them out there. Um, we just happened to decide on this one. And this one, by the way, is a combination of Illuminate and Somebody want to tell me what the other one was? Huh. There, there were two products. Was it Illuminate and Collaborate? Uh, no, I don't know. Um, but there were two different products that Blackboard bought. Wimba, thank you, Brett. Uh, Illuminate and Wimba. And Blackboard bought them both. And as is their design, they then shut at least one down. Uh, they say that they took the best features of both and put them into this collaborate so it isn't illuminate and it isn't Wimba but you'll see a lot of references to illuminate in it because that's the back end that they stuck with. Journal Club, absolutely. Um, I just did a demo at the, um, uh, Shane and I managed a demo at the ITLC, Information Technology Leadership Council with representatives from all the schools and colleges in that, that meet with Steve Colley, our CIO, and uh, we did a demo for them. And <clears throat> um, I sat at my desk and did the demo, and once it was turned on, I could hear everything that was going on in the room, all the questions. Um, if it would have been turned at them or turned, had the camera been turned at them or turned at the screen, I could have seen what was going on. Now, it's a little harder for me to participate. I, I could speak, but it, it, it's hard to get their attention and that kind of stuff. Um, but at least I could see what was going on and know that. Would you see the video capture sessions going into Kaltura? Oh, that's an interesting question, Cheryl. Um, I, I, I don't know. Uh, we haven't figured out exactly where Kaltura is going in the final analysis. I was putting all of my video into Kaltura because I thought it would help people see Kaltura. And then it was pointed out that we pay money for storage in Kaltura and bandwidth. And if it doesn't matter, just put it on YouTube. So all of these sessions are going on YouTube. Um, the, uh, for things that are limited, that you want to restrict access to, 
and certainly for copyright reasons and things like that, Kaltura is a great solution. Uh, but Vimeo and YouTube are great solutions if it doesn't matter who can access it. And in many cases, uh, getting public access is good. So if I was holding a meeting, would I put it on YouTube? Probably not. I'd, I'd look at Kaltura for the solution for the uh, recording. But I really don't even have to put the re recording out there and convert it and all. I can just send the committee members the link to the recording, and they can play it right as as it looks right here, um, except they're playing the recording instead of uh, participating live. And then they see the chat window scrolling, and they see the participants come and go. Uh, they're seeing a real recording of what happened. Or I believe that's right. Isn't that right, Brett, that they see the chat window moving and the participants coming and going? Yes, that's if you uh, play back the, uh, uh, the Java recording, but if we uh, export the video, it doesn't show the chat window unless we uh, explicitly include it. Yeah, so I think if you're if you're just doing something interactively and want to record it for the people who weren't there, um, just giving them access to that is probably much easier than anything else. And uh, but if you do want to distribute it widely, as we do with these sessions, we uh, uh, putting it onto someplace else is uh, is good. Where we the website where we post the videos of these sessions, U Miami BP archive. Is that right? Hmm. Does that point all the way to the VOH? Yes, it does. Oh, good. Okay. So U Miami BP archive uh, takes you to the page on uh, on our Weebly site. Uh, Weebly is a free website that is really easy to work with. So I've been dealing with that. I know I need to move it over. I know Alice Kerr is saying, why aren't you using the university's website? And and I will, I promise we will. But uh, um, but uh, for now, we're using Weebly. And uh, um, we have a page there, VOH. <laughs> no, you're not saying that. But you're thinking it, Alice. <laughs> Um, okay, it's 4.30. It is time to call it the end of another session. I thank you all for participating. Please tell your friends. We're up to uh, 14 participants. Um, Steve Cawley is following this and asking every week how many uh, participants we've got, how many people are, are taking part, and whether this is worthwhile or not. Uh, every Wednesday at 3.30. We're going to continue doing it, so uh, please please uh, attend again. And if there's something you'd like to present, if there's something you're doing that you think other people would be interested in, these are virtual office hours. Yeah, we're hosting it. Yeah, it tends to be Blackboard and educational, but we're open for anything. Or if you'd like to start these on your own for something that you're presenting, we're happy to help in any way we can. Thank you very much. And goodbye.